Hi everyone, welcome to GT Coding. In this video, we'll create this navigation menu using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. So let me show you a demo of how this works. We have this underline on the home menu item. Now when we go to a different menu, we can see that the underline moves to the other menu. And even the width changes according to the menu item. Now when we hover over another item, it goes to the other item. And when we leave the mouse from uh, all the menu items, it goes back to the home menu. So this is what we are going to design in this video. So let's get started. So as usual, we will start with the index.html file. So let's create a new file and uh, we will name it index.html. And uh, we'll also create a style file. So style.css. And we also need a JavaScript file. So we'll create a new file and uh, We'll name it main.js. Right, so let's start with the HTML file. And we'll just type exclamation and tap for the basic HTML5 boilerplate. And uh, we'll just give a title over here. All right, the first thing we need to have is uh, the nav menu. So we'll create a nav element. And in that we will have a UL. And in that we will have some list items. So we'll create an anchor tag and uh, we'll type home over here. Right now we will just copy this and uh, paste it some more times. And uh, here we will type FAQs. And uh, here we have services. And the last thing over here is the about. Alright, so let's open this with live server. And uh, here we can see our menu items. We'll also create an H1 and I will type hello YouTube over here. All right, so now we need to add the main JS and the style.css files to our index.html. So for the JavaScript file, we will add it uh, right before the body ends. Script SRC and I will type main.js and uh, we will link our CSS over here in the head section. Now let's add some CSS to our page. So we'll go to style.css and uh, first of all, we will add uh, a universal selector and we'll set the margin to zero, padding to zero and uh, box sizing to border box. We'll also give some styling to the body element, font family of poppins, sans serif and uh, background color of light gray. We'll style the H1 first and then we will go to the nav section. So margin top of 200 pixels, text align to the center and font size of 48 pixels and the color to 384A44. Now we'll style the nav element so for the nav element, we will have a background color of 384A44 and we'll set the position to relative so that we can position the underline to the nav element. All right, so now we will uh, style the nav UL. So we'll set the display to flex and uh, list style type to none and uh, justify content to the center. Now we'll style the list items and uh, we'll set the padding to 8 pixels, margin to 16 pixels and uh, 24 pixels. Now we'll style uh, the anchor tags inside the nav element. So the color will be white, text decoration to none and font size of uh, 20 pixels. Alright, that's pretty much it with the styling. Now we need to add the underline. So for that, we have to create a new division in index.html. So here after the UL, we'll create a new division with a class of nav line. And in the style.css, we'll create some uh, styling for the nav line. So we'll type nav line and uh, background color of white and position to absolute. And we'll set the height to 2 pixels. So we have to set the width and the left position in JavaScript. 
but we'll just add some random values over here to check how it looks so 100 pixels and uh, we'll set the top to 56 pixels and we'll set the width to 100 pixels as well so this is how the underline will look right so now we'll remove the width and the left positions from here because we'll be adding that using javascript and the last thing to do here is to add a transition so we'll set the transition of all to 0 0.7 seconds and we'll also add some timing function over here so right now we'll just type is and in google chrome you have the option of adding a cubic bezier so we'll just go to inspect over here and if you go to the nav line division over here and we can see this transition and if you click on this icon over here called open cubic bezier editor then we can see this editor over here and we can select different ones from here so we have a lot of different options over here and uh, you can also go ahead and tweak these points and you can create your own cubic bezier value so i did some tweaking over here and uh, i came up with a value so i'll just put that value over here so i'll type cubic bezier 0.43 comma 0.23 comma 0.29 comma 1.21 so this is the value that i came up with you can go ahead and uh, tweak it to your liking all right so now let's start with the javascript so we'll go to the main.js file and uh, here first of all uh, we need to reference some elements so we need to reference all these uh, nav elements so that we can know whether the mouse is over these elements or not and then we also need to reference the nav line that we created so that we can set its position and width so let's create a constant and uh, we will type nav elements and we'll type document dot query selector all because we want to select multiple elements and uh, here we'll type nav ul li so this will select all the allies inside the nav i'll create one more constant and uh, we will name it nav line and we'll type document dot query selector and we'll type dot nav line now let me just open the console and uh, i will show you some properties that we're going to use so let's go to console and uh, here we will type nav elements and here we can see all our list items and we are going to use two things from here one is the offset width so this is the offset width and we're going to use this value to set the width of our nav line and the next property we'll use is the offset left so we will use this value to position our nav line so let's go ahead and uh, add event listeners for all the elements inside uh, the nav elements so since there are multiple elements we will use a for each loop so we'll type nav elements dot for each and in here we can have a callback function and we have to set a name for a single element so we'll just type element for the single element and we will create an arrow function and here we will type element dot add event listener and the event listener we are going to use is mouse over and then we'll create another arrow function and we'll call a function called position nav line so this is a function that we haven't created yet we're going to pass two arguments over here one is the left value and one is the width value so we'll type element dot offset left and element dot offset width and these are the two values that we're going to pass in the position navline method i'll create the position navline method so we'll type const position navline and uh, we'll have two parameters left and uh, width and in our function we will set uh, the left and uh, the width of this navline element so let's type navline dot style dot left equals left that we get from uh, here and it should be in pixels so we will concatenate pixels over here and then nav line dot style dot width and we'll set it to the width that we get as a parameter and uh, we'll also concatenate the pixels over here 
All right, so now we have completed the position nav line method. Now let's check whether it is working. So we will hover over the first element and we can see the nav line has appeared and we'll go to the next element. We see it appears over here and here as well. But now when we leave the mouse, it doesn't go back to the home menu. So we also need to add an event listener for mouse leave. So we'll just copy this and uh, paste it down here. And here we will type mouse leave. And for this, we have to pass the left and the width of the first element. So what we'll do is uh, we will type nav elements and uh, we will select the first one from here. So it is an array. So it starts from zero and we'll do the same over here. Nav elements zero. All right. So now let's check whether it works. And if we leave the nav element, it goes back to the home menu item. So we are done with the mouse over and the mouse leave uh, event listeners. Now, the last thing we need to do is when the page is loaded, we want to display the nav line. So right now, when we refresh our page, we can see that at the beginning, we cannot see the nav line. And when we hover over any element, we can see the nav line. So let's add an event listener to the window object. So we'll type window dot add event listener. And the one we're going to use is DOM content loaded. And uh, we'll create an arrow function over here and we'll call the position nav line method. So we'll just copy this uh, line from here and we'll paste it down here. So now if we refresh our page, we can see that uh, we have this nav line displayed from the beginning. Now the last thing we need to do is when we resize the window, the position stays where it was before. So we have to refresh our page again. So for that, we'll create one more event listener. So we'll just copy this and we'll paste it down here. And for this one, we will type resize. All right. So now let's resize our window. And we can see that it works all right. All right. So that's basically it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And I will also leave the link for the source code in the description below. And also don't forget to subscribe to this channel to get the latest video notifications. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.